Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Ball Hour. It's been a long time. Lockdown has held us back for a moment, but we are back with new guests, new content, new episodes, and also a new face. Um, you guys are used to daps, but I go by the name of George Dems. My Instagram will be tagged in below, so if you want to show a man some love, do that. But yeah, man, welcome back. Hopefully, all you guys are keeping well. You're blessed and safe, and you're looking forward to the return of football and more episodes like us over here. With that being said, we're back with a new episode. Big guest to start off. I feel like if you're in non-league, you already know who this man is. The guy has done a lot. He's changed the game in my eyes. And at first, I didn't even like him at first. But you know what? Over time, I've come to respect the man, innit? You can't knock a man's hustle. And he goes by the name of Justin Gardner. Did I get that right? That's <laughs> Justin, how's everything going? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, it's obviously good news that like, uh, last week football should be back soon, even though it's grassroots. But, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm grassroots, full roots. You know what I mean? So any mm. football that I can get my football fix, I'm involved mm. in. So. Is that camera all right? I mean, when I say camera, is the microphone all right for you? Yeah, it's good. You want to close it? Yeah? <coughs> right. Is that good for you? Yeah? Uh, anyway, it's good. Just making sure. Him. Yeah, so... It's nice to know that you're excited. What have you been doing this lockdown? How have you found it? You know, something that we didn't expect, but it's come. How's it been for you? Yeah, to be honest with you, I, f I haven't stopped with football. Um, mm. I've been training my son um, a lot, one-to-ones. And um, yeah, I've been doing football five, six days a week still. So for me, I haven't really stopped. Obviously, stopped with the team and mm. uh, managing the men, etc. But football's a, an everyday thing for me and... Um, I don't stop, so... no. This guy's stop. coming like a superstar. I mean, like, <laughs> look uh, at no, the man's no, dripping no, that. No, no. <laughs> no but you, like I said, I'm just happy to be here with you, chopping it up with you today. But you just touched on something that I find really important. Um, you were spending time with your son, training him. Mm. That's huge for me. Um, what's it like being a manager and then having to go home to your child, you know, now that you're having more time with him? Because I'm pretty sure, like I said, you've been in the game for a minute mm. and... Football has pretty much been your life. So how how is it to have that time with your child now, your son? Yeah, I suppose <clears> uh, you got I me. Mean, I always try and take the positives out of everything, mm. and the positives have been I spent more time with my 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 children and my wife, um, which has obviously helped my son because I'm he's getting a lot of quality coaching for myself, um, which I'm seeing huge benefits in. So th that's been the massive positives. But the negatives have been is that he's been locked down from his academies. Oh, that he can't God. attend his yeah. academy. He can't play matches. Mm. I can't coach my men's team that I manage. So, like I said, but mm. I just use everything as a positive, really. And the positives are, as you said, I get to spend time with him and, mm. and I'm working with him daily. So it's good, yeah. All right, cool. With that being said, I'm ready to get straight into this. Why managing? Why managing? I feel like... Gosh, from... Before you ask a question, I want you to address that you said that you didn't like me because that's... that's... <laughs> That, that, that is something that I hear a lot and it's not, you're not the first to say no, it. Do you know what? But what people say to me yeah. is, from an outsider, I can't stand you. But when I get to know you, and yeah. I, 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 then I understand you. Do you know, it wasn't... It, it, I feel like... I, I don't say it personally. You're, no, you're no, no, no. I know... No, this is what I'm saying. Did, 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 it, no, no, but this is why... And George, I've known George a long time no. and he's probably been in change rooms <laughs> that millions of people <laughs> said the same. No, but this is what I'm saying. Over time, I've come to respect. I feel like when I said that I didn't like, like you, I mean, that was my first season in non-league football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, it's like I, I signed for Staines and I kind of needed like a team to play for. But mm. obviously, I didn't really have the knowledge of non-league football and how it worked. I just felt like, because I came out of a decent scheme, I was like, okay, I'm ready to play. Like, I've yeah, been yeah, playing yeah. in this team. Why, why the hell would I go to this team and my man's telling me I'm not good enough? Like, is he all right? Mm -hmm. But obviously, I, like I said, I didn't understand how it worked and I just thought, the way my man's handled this situation is a bit off for me, but that comes from a young mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, obviously, being in football and whatnot, understanding how it works, it, it took me time to understand like, oh, that's actually how it works. Like, the way you thought you could just come in and do whatever you want, it, it's actually a no. You have to earn your stripes out here. Yeah, and I'm, and then, listen, I'm really <clears throat> glad you said that because any young person mm. that's watching it, it's important that you're someone that is your, you're talking that it's happened to you working yeah. with me. And 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 I think you hit the nail on the head. A lot of young players come in and expect, all right, well, I've come from here. Like, mm. I mean, you should be lucky to have me. I should be playing every game. And don't understand there's, there's a procedure. There's a a purpose. There's, mm. there's 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 things that you have to go through. You have to understand yes. how the team play. You have to I have to understand you as a character. Yeah. And I have to see that you want it. 
that's the most important thing I see that you want it, not that expecting it. Yeah. And um, I'm glad that you 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 you've answered that because that is a case of a, a, mm. a, a number of young players that that I come across to work yeah. with, and the best players that progress are the ones that are coming mm. and are really to you know what I'm hearing it, it is what mm. it is I'm going to listen tell them what I've got to do to play, and they're the ones that normally go and flourish <laughs> and go on to play professional football under me. Like you said, like you said, a lot of people, a lot of people have said it, and for me it's like when they say I'm just I, I look at them as a person or as a footballer and be like. I try to observe the kind of person they are and be like, with the way you're talking, I don't really think you have a basis to talk about Justin like that. Obviously me, I didn't even know who you are. I just mm. I just came in thinking, nah, this guy can't tell me no. And obviously now, obviously knowing about you over the years is like, okay, maybe this guy's talking sense now. Like I need to chill. So I, I respect and I feel like I learned a huge lesson from that and it's kind of helped me get to um, where I am in non-league football. Mm. And you're um, doing well now. Yeah, competing against you, beating you. I mean, you know, <laughs> well, if you if you want to sign me, we can talk. But I'm happy where I'm at now. Um, <laughs> I think if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, we played each other twice in the league. What you won one, we won one. Hey, do you know I wasn't? I didn't play the second game, you know. Oh, they don't count. You 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 got a hundred percent record then. <laughs> hey, look, here's what it is. I'm a winner out here, but just yeah. um, I feel like you need to bring the microphone close to you. Yeah, is that better? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um. Yeah, so when yeah, so like like we were talking about, I done my research about you, and one thing mm. I found interesting is that before you started managing, you were actually helping college people that were unemployed with their CVs, mm. and um, you also done a motivational course. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I find that interesting. Like, I don't I don't know why, not, but not, it just not a lot of people know. About no, that, but, but th that's what I'm saying. I I don't feel like if you speak to a lot of managers today, they would tell you I've done a um, mm. motivational course. But for me. I feel like that that's big. That's very important. Um, so talk us through that. Yeah, well, um, I was working for... Well, I wasn't working. I was actually unemployed and I got a job working in a college, working with people that are unemployed. Mm -hmm. um, all ages from obviously 16 plus to adults, whatever age. And um, I, was, I, I got trained on the job to, to learn how to do motivational, which is motivating unemployed people because... I don't know if you've ever been unemployed okay. or what senior or unemployed. Sometimes they can become depressed, unmotivational, sit at home, watch TV, wake up late, go bed late, um, and they just think, oh, no one's going to give me a job. So mm. you have to find ways to motivate them. So we, I went on motivational training courses and, and then ended up being a motivational teacher myself, um, doing workshops around CV, CVs, motivation. And, and you just you, you do things that, mm. which I've took it into football, really. You do things yeah. that make people come out of their shell. So you'll do a, a, a scenario. It could be something as small as like, you know what I mean? All standing in a, in a circle, in a square, and you you, you tell a, a trick and you do a trick and they, they have to sort of participate. Yeah. But then normally somebody's not bubbly and then now they have to be part of it and sort of lead it. And, and without consciously knowing, they're leading the group. Okay. So it, it becomes wow. quite, it comes quite inspiring. And I love that job. Um, mm. The only thing is it, 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 it wasn't, Full time, right? it was more like okay, it was full time, but I wasn't being paid full time salary, okay. so I loved it and I didn't want to leave. And actual, the man that was there who was helping me, he was um, sort of recommending me to go and work for Connections. Like, the, you knew the manager of Connections, I yeah, don't know if you heard yeah. of Connections. I you might be a bit young, George. You heard of Connections? No, but I'm sure you are. <laughs> yeah, it, no, the reason I say <laughs> that is the, the, re room. the reason I say that is closed down, it closed down years ago, so it doesn't exist really that much anymore but I, I wouldn't was, have known about it then but obviously knowing knowing about you and hearing about your come up but I would have known that yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you worked there that's what I mean so yeah so I, I, I was gutted that I left that job and then I went to work with Connections and I was mm. working with kids that um, were part of Holly Street gang crime and things like that and yeah. see I, I'm glad I'm glad you touched up on that because that that's kind of how I wanted to shift so for me you've done a motivational course and you knew that you, you kind of wanted to be a manager from the start and I felt like for me I wanted to ask, like, what does manager mean to you? Because for me, someone who, you know, does a motivational course is already helping out from young, already has a vision long term that this is what I want to do, managing. So what does managing mean to you? Because I feel like... Well, I was doing that and mm -hmm. I was playing football, actually, at the same time. Footballer? Um, I was playing, yeah, believe it or not. You? <laughs> what position? Centre back. <laughs> um, you can learn from you, you know. Uh -huh. You can learn from me. If you want to go Veterans League, just watch it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, so I was playing and around a similar time, to be fair. Um, and then a couple of years later, mm. 
I was playing and the manager walked out and the secretary asked me to manage the team. I think I was like 23, 24. Because when I, when I was playing, I, I'm the same person as I am now. I was like quite vocal and I'll make sure that I, I'm sort of managing the players. I'm managing yeah. the team. I'm I'm bringing players in. I'm, I'm, I'm the captain about being a captain sometimes. Mm. You know what I mean? Or, uh, and like, so was, was that a player manager role then? Yeah, so when that's how I sort of got into it. The secretary said, can you manage the team? I was like, what, me? Like... I'm young. I, I had aspirations of still trying to play football at a decent mm. level, and um, yeah, so I, I, I took over managing the team that was practically we were struggling, relegated, um, doomed really. And um, I just called upon some. I was quite lucky. I had mates that were playing football at a decent level. I just called mm. upon them to come and play for me. And I think we had ten games left, and we had to win eight or nine to stay up in the league. And we won nine or something, and we stayed up. And then mm. I got the bug for it, and the rest <laughs> is history, really. Well, so you're the, you're the main man that changes things. One thing that's interesting for me is you said you were a player manager. So what's it like? Not you good. Been, huh? It's not good. It's not, Wait, it's not hold, nothing hold, that I recommend, but boy. <laughs> no, so you're a player manager now. And let's say you make a mistake on the pitch. Uh, uh, when the, You know how players make mistakes. Mm, they mm, bollock mm. each other. You're a player manager now. Do you feel as if like, because you're the manager and also the player, if you make a mistake, a couple of players are a bit like cautious to be like, why would you do that? Or... And, and that's why I stopped being a player manager and, mm. and, and solely Takes focused on managing because that's what was happening. I'm human. I was making mistakes and mm. then I've got to criticise or or address or maybe make changes mm. to people that are not performing. And who's going to tell me? At the time, I didn't have a management team that could turn around and tell me anything. So it wasn't like I had an older head on the sideline that could criticise mm. me. So um, I think the camera's gone off. Oh, George is probably swing out at the moment. Um, damn. No, it's still running. Um, no, but shifting the convo, um, touching on something you said earlier, you said you were in, you were in like gang culture. Oh, uh, uh, not 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 you physically being involved in gang mm. culture, but you were very much aware by uh, around the times you started managing. And one question I had is how how does growing up in gang culture, being in around it, knowing that your manager shaped your outlook on where it is to be. As a manager now, do you feel like when you are going into managing, it's not just as a manager for a football team, you are managing people oh, that are coming yeah. off the streets to, to, to better their future. If it's not to be a professional footballer, it's to take yeah, them better as, yeah, a better human or as high as they can go in football. So what's your outlook on managing now, now that you've been growing up in such environments? Well, <clears throat> no one's really asked about this, if I'm honest with you, any time I've been interviewed in terms of mm -hmm. uh, like, I feel I like was. you're about to touch on a, a, a story I found out no. about you that I found crazy. I couldn't believe it. Well, maybe you're going to have to touch up on it, but we're, we're, I think we'll come yeah. back to it. But what I was going to say is I was actually... I wouldn't say I was in a gang culture that was committing mad crimes, but I was definitely part of a gang. But I would say I wasn't in a gang that was like... At, at, we was, as I said, committing serious crimes. We was obviously mm. getting up to no good, but... Yeah. I wasn't in this gang situation where I felt I was being groomed or anything like that. I was yeah. more in control of it. If anything, I was probably one of the leaders. Leaders, okay. So, um, but that was, you're talking way before football <laughs> managing and everything. This is like in my teenage years, 13, 14, 15, 16. But yeah, so going back to uh, what you're saying is um, when I was working, what I found crazy when I was working for Connections and I had to work with, as I said, Holly Street gang members, mm -hmm. that's the first time I was, well, I must have been, so we're talking, I must have been 20, 21 and I'll be honest, it's the first time I was aware of postcode gangs. Okay. Right? Uh, and I'll tell you how I found out, and it was sh it was shocking to me. So, do you know Holly Street? Holly Street? Yeah, in Hackney. Okay. No. Well, Holly Street is 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 close to Dalston, yeah? Okay. I know where and Dalston is. across the road could be another postcode. So, literally across the road. So, your mum mm. could live across the road, you could live across the road, and you have your own flat across the mm. road, yeah, so to speak. But if you cross that road, and you're not got, and you're not part of that, postcode mm. you're gonna get beats but anyway um yeah I was, I was part of um i was sitting in the holly street youth center and yeah. talking to the boys playing a game just talking about like the things that they shouldn't yeah. be doing and trying mm. to motivate them encourage them to do good things and everyone just got up and run out and i was like i was like what's happened here mm. gone outside the window they've battered a kid outside Battered him, yeah? And I've, they've come back in after. I said, why did you do that? He said, oh, he shouldn't be in our postcode. I said, you know him? He said, no, he just can't walk in our area. He's not allowed in our area. Mm. So that was the first time I was fully, fully aware of it. And, um, yeah, so from, from there, I was I was working um, with with one one boy. Um, 
who was part, who, who got caught up in that, and unfortunately he's not with us anymore. Crazy. Um, so, um, but that same guy, um, I, I went and rep- represented him in court and tried to, uh, well, not tried and helped get him out of um, going to prison, basically. Which, so that's the, tw- that I've done that twice, but yeah, no, him particularly. No. Touch, touching on that, so. You kept two people from going to prison, mm. and if I'm not mistaken, you gave a roof over one of their heads, mm. one of the guys' heads to live under. And for me, I find that crazy because as a manager, I feel like nowadays they're, they're, they're starting to be such a distant relationship. I don't know if you were a manager at the time, but... Yeah, I was. I was, I was his manager. So, so my, point, proves my point even more. So for you to do such a thing... Like, what was that like? Like, why did you do it? Because I feel like a lot of people would be like, why would you, why would a manager do that? Is that not crossing player-manager boundaries? But I feel like there's more to it than just that. One, I knew him from when he was young, when he was at pro clubs. Mm. Um, he broke his leg at 15, 6, no, at 16, 17, and got released by a pro club. Then I got caught up in Magnus and didn't sort of fell out of football. I got him back into football. Mm-hmm. Um, he was playing for me he became a family friend he was a family friend he knows my brother and sisters he knows my mum and dad and um, unfortunately well, I'll, I'll, obviously I'll keep his name out of it but um, he was asked he wasn't really a, he wasn't a, I wouldn't say he's a bad kid in terms of like again I wouldn't say he's a bad kid that he goes around hurting people or goes around mugging people or robbing people for yeah. the sake of it he would just hustle like a lot of people did at that age you know what I mean what I call minor crime, yeah, um, which I'm not excusing, but I'm just saying he wasn't like someone that I, you wouldn't say he's a bad kid. He was a he nice, yeah. he was a nice kid, and um, a family member said said to him, "Can like I've got I'm working somewhere. Come and tie me up, rob me, and like it's easy. You get away with it. Mm. It's just like you know what I mean. So it's like me saying to you, me, you're my my family, and I say to you, look, I work at this place. I know the ins and outs. There's mm. There's like 20 grand in the okay, safe. Yeah. Come and tie me up. I'll let you through the back door, tie me up, take the money, and then I'll just say I didn't see your face or whatever, yeah? yeah. Made it sound so simple as that, which obviously we know <laughs> nothing's as simple, simple as that, yeah? Now, yeah. uh, this person was a close relative to this person, yeah, very close. As close, I mean, put your imagination as close as probably you could be to someone. Um, anyway, so obviously the police investigated that person who was working there, mm. and the person just squealed his name straight away. Did it? Didn't? Didn't hide it? Didn't said? Yeah, he did this. He he tied me up. Like made it sound like he did it properly. When crazy, and I know it wasn't like that. So he he had to, he, he got he got put in prison. He was in prison. I'm not gonna uh, deny that. And um, the bail to get him, it, it, there was a bail. They wanted I think six and a half grand to bail him to come out of prison while a pending investigation. Yeah. So I put up the money myself, um, and got him out on bail, and then. Another side of it, they said, okay, he needs an address to live at because the way he was living, he couldn't go back to. Yeah. So I, I said to my mum, mum, can you let, let him come in? Let him stay here. Mm. My mum said, no, no problem. And yeah, he was living at my mum's, I think maybe for six to eight months. Um, I got letters from respected people, doctors that I know, people in professional football, people in my football club people that just knew him and we went to court and he didn't have a lawyer. I, I sort of spoke for him and we produced all these, um, which were true, good good things about him, that he's yeah. a good kid and from respectable people. And the, the, to, the judge was superb and the judge just said, look, you're a young kid who's got aspirations to be a professional footballer still. We believe you've been abused. You've been, mm. you've been, you know what I mean? And yeah, he, he got off of it and, and, and yeah, he, he was he, the case was sort of dropped, and he got slapped on the wrist really after that. So for you, so with that being said, for for you, ma- management is just it's bigger than football for you, and it? It, it it's life itself. And obviously, like I said, you you you've done motivational courses and that. Um, moving forward, you, how does having because obviously you mentioned earlier you've got um your son who you train. Mm. So how does having a child now? change your outlook on management or how, or how does like training your kid make you change as a manager or develop? Well, yeah, what, what I will keep saying to my son is that he's in a lucky, privileged position that he's got three of the biggest London clubs trying to sign him and he's only just turned eight years old and mm. that he needs to realise that it's a dog-eat-dog out there. It doesn't mean because now they want you that 
that that you've, you're, that, you, that you've achieved anything. If anything, the work's just going to be harder and harder. And I put, I push him as much as he wants to be pushed because mm. he's quite self motivated. He wants to, he wants to be better, and he he likes to, he loves football and he likes to train. So, but at the same time, you got to keep your feet on the ground because at at this moment in time, he, he is quite an exceptional talent. But I've worked with exceptional talents that I'm telling you should have been playing in the Premier League and playing for their country, but they're, they're probably not playing higher than the league that you're playing at. <clears throat> Just touching on that, so with that being said, you, you, you see potential and you see talent in someone. It burns As a manager, me. It burns, how... me. It burns me. <laughs> I feel like you've come across a lot because uh, you've been in the game for a minute. But I, I, I take it personal. Like, mm. I, I take it like... I, I, it really... It really um, I take it as a failure on my part as well. I, mm. I, I do beat myself up a lot about it. I've worked with some players that are so good, so good... And I've tried my best. I, I can obviously look in the mirror and say I've tried my best, but you can't force someone. Lynch. I can't mm-hmm. force you to listen to me. I can't force mm-hmm. you to change your lifestyle. I can't force you to dedicate yourself to football. I can't force yourself to drop people that are bad influence on you. I can't force you to wake up early to go extra do extra training. Yeah, I can only ask you to do that. You mm-hmm. understand? I can't force you. I can't. And the only way I can force someone like that is if every single player I make them live with me and they wake up and do the daily routine that I do. That's not feasible. I'm a married man now and I've got kids. When I did mm-hmm. those things before, I was I wasn't in those situations where I had responsibilities with kids and and wives and things like that. So things do change, but at the same time, I still give all players the opportunity if they if if they want it if they want it. Mm-hmm. And it burns me and it it, it grinds with me. And as I said, I've got a few players that. When I do retire football, it will be something that I look back and think, I I I feel I failed because yeah. I didn't get the best out of them. But I also got to look on the other side as I couldn't force them. I, I appreciate that. And, you know, I feel like we need more managers like you in the game, you know, that keep it real, that are going to constantly be on players' back. And for me, I see that as an inspiration um, in terms of for managers to be in the game. But one thing... Um, I realised or um, found out about you is that you don't actually have any inspirations or role models. So for me, it was like, who who do you look up to? Because a lot of people will say, I look up to Messi, I look up to Ronaldo, they're my inspirations. But you didn't have that. And at the time, you were roughly, what, one out of five managers that were black coaching in England. So for me, w- what was that like? How do you find your own, like, who who's your inspiration? Like, what? yeah. It's, it, and, and I think my, I think I've done this sort of, I think someone asked that question before in the interview mm. and my wife sort of told me off really she said that she felt I was quite disrespectful <laughs> to, I was quite disrespectful to my parents Yo. okay because, oh. but I would say to her I'm, I'm just an honest person that I, I, I have to keep it 100 at all times and I love my mum and dad but I've, I've looked after myself since the age of 12 I bought my own clothes and trains and fed myself since I was 12 years of age so mm. what I don't want to lie on camera and then people that know me know that Justin, that's not the situation. Because mm. uh, one thing, whether it's you or anyone else, is I'm 100. I'm real. I'm not fake. I don't tell lies. I don't sell dreams. You understand? So mm. I have to be honest with you and say that, unfortunately, I've never had someone that I've, I, I, I looked up to or, or I thought... I've had people that have helped me. Like, there's a couple... Listen, I lost, I lost someone the other day... Um, a couple of days ago at one o'clock in the morning, I received a message that someone, if it wasn't for him, probably I wouldn't have had the opportunity in football because at nine years of age, as I said, my mum and dad didn't re- my mum and dad didn't have any interest in me playing football, yeah. didn't support me, didn't mm. take me to football games or anything. But at nine years of age, games that start to play like uh, junior football, you have to travel and things like that. And a, a, a player's dad sort of took me under his wing and from nine to 12 was taking me football, picking me up, let me come to his house after, before... And he passed away the other day and it, it 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 really hurt me. And I said to my wife, there's not many people, because people die and I, I'm not saying it's, it's something that I'm I, immune to, but I, there's not a lot of people's deaths that I'll probably, it will probably kill me, if you yeah, know what I mean. I but you. but it, it took a, it, it upset me and it, and, and it was devastating because he'd done a lot for me. And when I look back, I think if it wasn't for him, if, I might not have been in football in terms of from nine. Nine's young, you understand? Very young. So yeah, so... There's, I can say there's people that have helped me, mm. but it's very few. But some would say like, oh, I wanted to be him or he inspired me or he made me do this. I can't really put my finger. Again, I can only tell you football players when I was growing up, Gaza. I, when I was playing in the street, I wanted to be Gascoin. I was running around the pitch saying I'm Gaza. But I wouldn't say I'd look up to him or he was a role model because he probably wasn't the best role model to be looking up to. So, yeah. No, um, but just touching... Michael you. Owen, oh. when, when he scored in the World Cup, it's, it's sort of... It, it was exciting was, when yeah, he was 17. Was but 
Yeah, so unfortunately, I can't really give you someone that, like, I know mm. a lot of people when they've been interviewed, yeah, if it weren't for this guy, he's my own brother. I can't give you that. I, I respect that, you know, each to their own at the end of the day. But just to touch on um, you being one out of five black managers in England, like, what was that like? I feel like that for, for minorities like myself and you, that that's very big, you know, mm. like we now have a pioneer in the game, changing the game for us, for, for more managers to come through, more kids to look up and aspire to be like, yeah, I want to do what he's doing. What's that like for you? Yeah, obviously at the time it was um, it was shocking when I found a stat like that, really, if I'm honest with you. And then I sort of really went and looked myself and I went from the Premier League all the way down to the non-league and thought, oh, right, yeah, that, that is That's true. That's a lot I think, of leagues. I think at the time I can only remember Chris Hugh and Keith Curl in the pro game. I couldn't, I couldn't think of anyone else in England I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, and in non-league, I, 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 apart from I think Jason, is it Jason? Jason Hippolot? Is it Jason? Hippolyte? Oh, um, Trax, Jack, Trax. Jackson, J Jack Hip. Uh, no, is it no? It's Trax, isn't it? Trax. Trax. Yeah. That's his name. Jax. I was going to say Jackson. No, he was, Jax. he was one in non-league, and I couldn't. And there was one more, and I couldn't. Yeah, and I was shocked. But we are talking like fifteen years ago that when I, I thought I Trax said that. Jax was my first manager. Yeah. Yeah, I came from. And him see, he's not managing now. He's which not is, which is, I don't know if that's down to him or lack, or lack of opportunities, but I hope it is down to him and ain't a lack of opportunities because he, he's got a good reputation as well. Yeah, he has. He had a very good team around him as well. So, yeah. So, now nah, that's changed. Uh, I'm not saying, I'm not saying mm. it needs to be more, but uh, as you know, there's there's, 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 there's a lot of good black managers right now. Facts. And, and, and the question I have, as you've just said, there's a lot of good managers like in the game, but... Why do you feel like there's not enough black managers? Do you feel like it's because of lack of opportunity or is it? do you feel like people want to be managers but they don't have the courage that you... Uh, I'm going to give you, there's a few reasons. It's not just one. One, because they're not getting an opportunity. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I think if you... If you if there was 300... Say, I don't know how many non-league clubs there are. Let's say there's 300 non-league clubs, yeah? Probably more, but let's just say there's 300 non-league clubs. Out of those 300 non-league clubs, you'd be lucky if 10% are willing to interview someone from a black background, in my opinion, yeah? Mm. Right? That's the first step. Um, two, I also blame people, black people and people from um, other minority backgrounds that they're not willing to do the hard work. Not everyone. Yeah. Some of them, they expect it to be given to given them. Given to them, yeah. Maybe because they, was they the top goal scorer at that club or whatever, that they, sh they should don't have to do the grind and do the, the, the rounds. That's, that's two reasons. And third, I believe some... Again, not all do are not willing to start from the bottom. Now, I started managing mm, at level ten. You probably don't even know the level ten. Do you understand? I don't, I don't know. I don't so, know what that is. That is. That's what I'm trying to say to you. Yeah, that's 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 Middlesex County. That's borderline. It's basically Sunday football on a Saturday. There was no difference apart from you kicked off at two thirty, three o'clock, but the pitches were the same. It was not a stadium. It was it was just a pitch. Yeah, there mm. and, and a change room that you had to walk to. It was basically like. A Sunday pitch, yeah. Won the league, got promoted. Second league season, you go up, starts to get a little bit more uh, rules. You have to have a rope going around the pitch, just a rope, yeah. Damn, Again, that's crazy right? Way. Won that league, got promoted to the Essex Senior League, yeah. Because yeah. that we jumped two divisions because there wasn't a step six at the time, so we okay. went from ten to tell a lie. The club went from ten to nine as a player myself, so and then from I went from nine to seven with a team. And then from seven, we went straight to five, which is the senior league step yeah. five. That's when it starts to get serious. You have to have a stadium. So, um, but at, towards the end of step seven season, we already found Milan Stadium. So what I'm trying to say to you is I, I started at the bottom where, if I'm honest with you, I don't know. I'm not saying there isn't. I don't know another black manager that started that low. Mm. I don't know one, but I'm pretty confident there's loads. So that's another reason. I remember seeing something on, on social media a few months ago. A lot of players were arguing. I didn't get involved in it, but people were saying, well, this is a black um, a guy that wanted to become a manager. Well, he should start at this level. And all the people coming on Twitter, players that have played for him or like him or whatever, well, he doesn't. He shouldn't have to. Why should he have to? He's very good. But he doesn't. He's not achieved anything as a manager. Mm. He's not achieved that. If it wasn't for the guy, the secretary giving me a chance at Wolves, though, and me achieving, I put, who would I, I'm not been an ex-professional footballer, so why would I have been given an opportunity to manage at levels that I'm be managing at? You have to work. You have to put the grind in. Now, I've asked this, I've asked this question a, a, a lot. Do I believe if if I was if I was a if if I was a white person, do I believe I'll be managing at a high level? One hundred percent. 
Do I get upset about it? No. Do I blame anyone? No. Because I'm happy with who I am. I'm, I'm, I love my mum and dad for bringing me into this world. That's life. Like, you don't, you don't, if you sit down and beat yourself up about it, you're going to be depressed. So you just got to work hard, work hard. And, and I like to feel now, all the 15 years I've done, I'm starting to see the rewards because now I'm managing a team that's one of the best, tra- one, one of the best football pitches in, in non league. State of the art 4G. You, you won't you won't play on better. So slowly now I just need to make sure that the chair in a couple of years, whether it's this year or next year, which I'm hoping is the season coming, that the, the finances match the, mm. the facilities that I can track to get better players in. So it is what it is, man. With that being said, because obviously the one of the pioneers for you know pushing black managers out there, mm. do you believe that you have like um a duty or responsibility that if a um, a young black boy, um, let's say of about eighteen twenty maybe, wanted to get into coaching and you know he needed experience but he doesn't have experience. Do you believe that it's now down to you to be like, oh okay, come under my wing, let me show you and you know get you up in the game, or do you believe that he should go through what you went through and kind of work from there and then when the chance comes, then he can get a spoon fed in his mouth or? Well, it, to me, it, it depends on. What they've done it depends what yeah. where they are in their career at the time. If it's someone who's just never coached and never managed people, or he's not been identified as got in a, a skill in that area, yeah. then I'd probably say to him, "Look, come and manage a youth team, okay, coach some yeah. youth team players at my club, which I've done before." Or I might say, "Come and put a session on for my boys." Or I might say, "Let's put a trials on game. You take the session." Or I might say, "Come to my Sunday team." Um, it, again, it'd be different. Look, I've had, I've gave, you know I mean, I've gave, I've gave loads of young coaches opportunities to work with me. Andre Thomas, um, my assistant manager now, he's 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 twenty five years of age. He'd come at twenty four, but he had, he was, he came from a highly respected crate under twenty three team, but never never done senior men's football before. Okay. You know I mean, I gave him his first opportunity, and he's a good, very good coach. I feel like that's credit to you, and it speaks volume because you guys are doing a decent job down that. Oh, where? Excuse me. Um, I feel like that's credit to you because, like I said, you guys are doing a decent job down that um bark, and I feel like you guys are forced to be reckoned with, so to say. And when we come up against you guys, you know, um, you guys do give us a good game. You guys are very well respectful, and you take us in. So. That's credit to you guys and the way you're taking him under your wing and, you know, showing him the ropes. I feel like that's very important for um, people trying to move through um, the ranks in their career. But one thing you touched on as well is you've been managing for 16, 17 years now. That's a long time. And boy, I feel like you've seen a lot. So I just wanted to know what changes have you seen in the game and what changes would you like to see? Changes I've seen... um... I don't want this because obviously with this, um, got to be careful what you say words, but I, I, I don't know how to clear it up. I don't feel there's many, let me change the word. There's, I think a lot of players that come into the game now have been spoon fed. No, I can agree with that. I, I did I want to use a word that. that I'll probably get a lot of stick about. Um, I'm sure you can put your imagination to what I'm trying to say, but there's, there's a lot of um, players that have come from a background and, um, a situation where everything's done for them. Facts. Yeah, they've I not agree. had to grind. So, talented wise, there's a lot of talent in young players. But as I said to you, they've come into a situation where they, just a small situation, they might turn up to a match day and they don't. They expect a towel to be there for them. See, see, this is what I find mad because they expect shin pads to be there. For them. <laughs> nah, this nah, probably did not, happen nah. when they was at their Arsenal and Tottenham academies. I. I've not been in an academy yeah. like that, so I can't comment on that. So that's a different thing I'll say is, 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 and if I'm honest with you, which I don't like, I feel football is becoming close to an individual sport, which is impossible to say if you understand what I'm saying, because you have to play with 11 versus 11. Yeah. But I do think from now to when you, for example, you're saying 10, 15 years ago, and I don't want to be one of these people that say, oh, but back in the days or whatever, but I feel there's a lot of individuals in football that they have to be part of a team to get what they want to get out of it. Mm. And I don't like that because you, you, the person scoring the goals needs the man to pass it. The person's keeping the clean sheets out needs the people in front of him to, to, to help them. 
So it's a team sport, but I do feel, you know what I mean? One thing I can't stand when I see on social media is your team's lost 5-1, five, five, but the person scored the one goal says, but I'm lucky today, but I scored a goal. But you know what, yeah. Okay. I, I can't stand that. No, I, 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 honestly, I, I, I can't stand that. I hear that. why you say this, but I'm just going to touch on two things. I agree with you about players being spoon-fed, and mm. I, I, I don't like seeing that. I don't agree with it myself, but... For me, it's kind of frustrating where I know a manager doesn't like that, but he will still then go and, you know, give that guy the opportunity or play against, put him ahead of someone who's been, you know, grafting, someone who comes on time, someone who wants to do extras, someone who's always, you know, picking up the equipment, helping out. Like, yeah, but well, I, well, I can't speak about managers. That won't happen. No, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, it. like, I, I very much agree with you, but I just find it crazy that... We we have managers that would say, oh, I don't like players that are being spoon fed, but but they'll be the same managers. I'll be like, nah, don't worry, he's starting. Yeah, like you, like I and find I, that. I'm crazy. saying that wouldn't happen to me. I I remember even last season at Barking, you might even know it when you played against us. Mm. I had a few fans and some people in committee members said, uh, our bench. Have you seen our bench? Like it's like I hear whispers. Our bench is probably got four of our best players on the bench. They don't know what happened at training that week. Mm. They don't know what happened at the game that week. And they they were probably right on paper they was, you know what I mean <laughs> you saw the names that was on the bench, and actual fact I I remember playing a game and I said to my add to my assistant manager the bench there was we had five players on the bench four of the players on the bench cost more than the whole starting lineup that was on the pitch, <laughs> but I don't pick Yo, I don't pick on who's crazy. being paid or because you play you're an ex pro I don't I don't I do I want to see how you are in training I want to see if you turn up on time I want to see how, how you hold accountable when things don't go well. And 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 if if I have to play a guy that's just come from Sunday League football over a guy that's played three, four hundred games in non league and has won five trophies, but that guy who's just come from Sunday League football is doing everything I want, mm. doing everything I write, doing those extras, being on time, listening to the coaching, listening to what my assistant manager's putting on a session for him to do, then he's going to play. And it might cost us a result. It might cost us a result. But I don't now another manager said to me last season, he said, Justin. Like you've got a good team, you're a good manager, but like, why don't you play your best players all the time and play a certain style of football? You'd get promoted, you'd walk the league. Mm-hmm. Now, one, I, I, I won't play an ugly way to win unless my team's down the bottom relegation and you have to do it to get out because you don't get relegated and lose your job. I understand that. But I wouldn't do that because I want to be involved in it. And two, I would love to play the best players every week. But that's not how football works. I agree. Because if a man's yeah. telling me he can't come training on a Tuesday, Thursday, but it's available Saturday, you're not playing Saturday. Why can you come? So you can get work off on Saturday, but you can't get work off on Tuesday and Thursday. One-offs, I don't mind. But mm. when it's a pattern of the same player, it doesn't wash with me. I've ne- I've missed one training session in 17 years. That's crazy. No, that's that's credit to you and the work that you're trying to do and what like you're a man of principles and what you're trying to feed down to these players. But... Just to round up before we round mm. it up, um, I've got a couple of questions I want to ask you. Um, who's the best team you've coached? Because I feel like a lot of people, when they come across you, they'll know you as Justin, the guy that, you know, changed Avely. Mm. So who's the best team you've coached? Um, and you're not allowed to say Baytees because this is... Nah, but I, w- that, that, I wouldn't... That, that wouldn't be... I'll be... You, you have to... Mm talk about the team that I've coached and have been involved in on a weekly basis yeah. rather than just on a Sunday. Yeah. Um, I've I've coached some good teams. Maybe you can ask me what was my most enjoyable. I don't know because I've coached some good teams. The team that we had at Bethnal Green when we um, won 18 games in a row to get promoted to Essex Senior League. Outstanding team. Then the team that was in Essex Senior League where we got to the quarterfinals at FA, uh, FA Vars should have won the league, but I got the uh, an offer from Avery that I couldn't turn down. That team was um that team was all my mates. So that was probably my most like fun times because mm. I was with my mates that I went partying with on the weekend and played football with and then they had to listen to me and then <laughs> I'll go out of them and say, We have to go home now because we've got a game or whatever. So that was like that was the man them. So that team I loved, you know what I mean? And I, I was even reminiscing with some of the boys the other day. So that team I loved, that was my people, that was my boys. Um Avery team that in my first season we got to the playoffs. Yeah. Um was was formidable. Um the team cost six hundred pounds a week and we played Morden that was if you know Morden, yeah, they always had a, yeah, uh, a well established boys, budget. Yeah. And we had a man sent off after twenty eight minutes. So killed us. And I think we went one new up as well. 
after that, but then we lost the game 2 1 or 3 1. And that was devastating because I knew we had to go up to keep the team together. Because yeah. I was paying people £50 a week, £40 a week, and they got offered like three, four hundred pound the following season. So I couldn't. It gets like that. Sometimes. I, no, but I, yeah. I, I wasn't upset with yeah. I couldn't yeah. blame them. Mm. Yeah, you know I mean, and listen, and that's another thing. I don't ever begrudge anyone moving on to better themselves. But what I do begrudge players is moving for the extra 50 quid and they're not knowing the environment that they're going to. Yeah. Then they're, they're traveling even further and it's not even a, it's not even a, it's not even a step up. Yeah. You understand? No, like, I agree I, with I, that. that, one, that yeah. they're, they're the things that I will can't take and I'll. Like let people players know how I feel about that. But if a player wants wants to go to a high level and he's gonna play every week and it's an improvement and the club's even better than the club I'm at, I'm gonna drive you there myself. Alright, cool. I like that. Next question. Fergie, Pep, or Klopp? Which manager is the one for you? Um, Alex who's Ferguson. won the most trophies? Alex Ferguson, isn't it? Um, I think I think it might be Alex Ferguson, but Pep is not for, Pep would be catching up soon. Though. Um I'm am a Tottenham fan, and oh. um, I, I I I guess this is why this, oh. this podcast is put on early, <laughs> nah, so I missed the game. Man. But good for, good, I got to watch it because it was running late. Um, but anyway, um, I, I I have to be honest. I'm Alex Fer- I used to love watching Man United mm. um, and Alex Ferguson. But if you're talking about style of football and and changing the game, I know people say Brazil, Holland used to play like that, and it's in Spain, Spain, and but to do it in the Premier League, people say Guardiola wouldn't be able to do it. Um, mm. So, I'll say Guardiola is better than Klopp. I'll take Guardiola over Klopp, but I, I think if you say who do I want as my manager of Tottenham, at all three of them. Oh, get out, um, man. get out of here, man! It's a tough one. It has to be at like Guardiola and Alex Ferguson. You can't. I don't think you can knock either of them. But as you said, Guardiola has got an opportunity to go on and still win more trophies. So, um, yeah, I, could, I don't know. Guardiola. Guardiola. <laughs> All right, cool. Last one before we wrap it up. What's next for Justin Gardner? Well, next is that hopefully the season um, starts in August because obviously it, I'm hearing the season ain't going to start again this season. It's yeah. been, what's it, Kurt, 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 or Kurt or something? I don't know. Yeah. Kurt out, what, just Seems these words done. that they make up. Um, so, yeah, so we're we'll looking forward to us being speak. I've got a meeting with the chairman on Tuesday to see when we can start Obviously, with with the FA's permission, yeah. start even training, so we can do some training, whether that's in April, May, June, July, or whatever. Start to get training and prepare for next season. And as I said, with the facilities that we got, I want to be able to attract a better player for the, for for this season. And as always, and definitely for next season, our ambition to be get promoted, which it was this season, and um, that's the aim. And like I said, I would love nothing more to 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 have some more young players come through the Barking Academy into the first team. We've got a striker that I took. Through the from the um, under no, under eighteens under twenty threes this season he's been training with two Premier League clubs, so uh, sorry one Premier League club and one um, um, second division um, club, so mm. hopefully he gets signed and then there's another one off the conveyor belt and like I said I just I just I, I'm just here to help young players progress that want it though you understand yeah. the player can tell me they want to be a pro but not willing to do the extras if you're willing to listen I promise you if you've got talent and you listen to me. I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but you'll go far in football. Wow. There we have it, guys. Justin Gardner. The record speaks for itself. What he's done in the game speaks for itself. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. All the gems that you dropped for the viewers today. Guys, that concludes our session. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share the video. You know, if you want to hit Justin Gardner up to better yourself as he's the man, apparently then do that. But other than that, Not like guys, that, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> other than that, guys, take care of yourself, stay blessed, and we'll be back with you guys in a bit. Peace.